Hi guys, this is my I am a Wargamer video. How's it going guys, Steve here. This is a video that I am doing in response to Mr. Andrew Cox nominating me to film an I am a Wargamer video. So thank you Andrew for that. For any of you guys who don't know what this is, it's basically a video where a YouTuber or content creator nominates um, someone in a similar position to answer three questions. The three questions are, how did I become a wargamer? Why did I start up a YouTube channel? And what advice would I give to someone who's thinking of creating a YouTube channel or becoming a content creator themselves? I'll also nominate three more people at the end of the video uh, to carry the torch for this video and keep going with it. So, like I said, thank you to Andrew Cox for nominating me. He uh, said some nice things about me, which I, I greatly appreciate. He is a great pal. We met in the gaming um, universe, and I think we'll be gaming buddies for a long, long time to come. Um, this started off with Spud from Chilling Wargamers. Uh, again, everyone I mentioned in the video, there will be a link to their channel and their content um, platforms below, so do check those out. But it was Spud at Chilling Wargamers who kickstarted this again. This was something that was happening um i think it was a couple of years ago or yeah it was a couple of years ago so it's, it's nice to get it going again and, and mixing it up and seeing what's new and who's about so yeah great stuff so let's get into it how did i become a wargamer i was never a wargamer growing up um i had hero quest the game i got it one christmas i had one pal and my younger brother who used to play it my other mates had no interest in it whatsoever um, I really enjoyed it, and I think it's it's what it planted a seed in the back of my head, so that then when I was a little bit older, um, things just clicked, and I was like, yeah, I can I can get into this, and I've you know I've got my own money, I can, I can, <laughs> I can throw my money at this, so I think it was a case of that. Um, but yeah, I didn't play as a child, um, didn't paint as a child, didn't do anything like that. Um, and then I, I have a son who's twenty two. And when The Lord of the Rings Two Towers, the second movie, was out, um, the subscription was available for uh, Battle Games in Middle Earth, which was a magazine which was done by a company called D'Agostini um, in cohorts with Games Workshop. And they would release a fortnightly magazine. And every fortnight, you'd either get a sprue with some warriors on or you'd get some of the nice uh, metal miniatures and some paints and brushes and things like that. So when he's seen the adverts, my lad, uh, he minded the life out of me to get them uh, and subscribe, which I did. Um, I took him to GW and picked him up some extra models. Um, and it was something that I could do with uh, my son. Me and him could sit down and we could spend a few hours painting models and then just roll some dice. We never, we never played by the actual rules. Uh, we had the book because I bought the Two Towers box set. Um, and I read it a few times, but I wasn't used to, to reading books that were so in-depth about a board game. So it would go in and then just go out as soon as I flip the page. So we made our own rules up and it was just a case of whoever rolled higher would win a fight, etc, etc. Anyway, he grew up, um, left for college, um, discovered girls and drinking and partying. Um, and I was still this saddle at home with a load of toy soldiers. Uh, but I really enjoyed painting them. Paint painting them was my thing. I don't think I ever thought I'd ever play. Didn't really have the interest in it, but the models were great. Um, loved, loved the movies, loved the books. Uh, so I was a bit of a Tolkien uh, fan anyway. So I started trolling the internet and I found a website called uh, The One Ring, which had uh, was basically forum boards, uh, forum message boards. And I would uh, get chatting to people and post pictures of my, my painting up and you, know, you get some good feedback and it spurs you on to do more and blah, de, blah, de, blah. Uh, through them, through there, I met some uh, a few people um and uh there's, there's two people in particular that i met on there which i'll come to on question two um but yeah i met a few people from um the great british hobbit league community who i am still very good friends with to this day and still work with creating content to this day uh, so it shows you how uh, how much these friendships stick around so that's how i got into wargaming uh, eventually meeting up with the people that i was talking to online and learning the game through them, uh, playing, actually getting getting models down on the table, rolling some dice and playing. Um, and yeah, that's how I become a war game and I've not looked back since and I wouldn't change it for the world. So why did I become a YouTuber? Didn't It wasn't a conscious decision, really. Um, as I said before, meeting people who are local through the Wandering Forums uh, and playing. There was two lads 
uh, Jamie and James, who set up the great, well, it's the GBHL podcast, which is a YouTube channel based in and around the Great British Hobbit League. The Great British Hobbit League is a league, is basically what it says on the tin. So there are multiple tournaments each month uh, and all the results and everything are amalgamated into uh, one league table. And then at the end of the year, uh, there is a winner and a runner up, etc., etc., etc. So it's not just individual independent events that are just freestanding. They can be, or you can see them as that if you wish. Uh, but for every every time you attend one of these events, you, you, you get a, a number to your name and uh, records are taken. Um, and it's great. It's, it's, it's one of the ways that I have made all my, pretty much all my uh, wargaming books. So yeah, I got playing these guys. Um, they had already, already created uh, the GBHL podcast. Um, and it was soon to be, because, because I'd been painting for a while, I had quite a few uh, armies already painted um, and they wanted to feature more armies on the channel on battle reports and such so uh, I became sort of the guy who the hosts played uh, in battle reports generally the whipping guy the whipping boy should I say uh, but it was a lot of fun I enjoyed it it wasn't long then that um, more hosts appeared on the GHL podcast um, Tom and Damien became hosts and then it wasn't long after that that I actually became a host, uh, also with uh, Harry Moore, who's another member of the uh, Great British, well, Great British Hobbit League family, should we say? So th there was quite a few hosts, and uh, in in its heyday, there was a lot of content going out in the the, the Great British Hobbit League, um, and it was great. And that's where I kind of got my uh, feel for the uh, environment, if you like, that is uh, creating content in YouTube. So. It was kind of from there that I, well, Top Table Gaming was born. Um, I, because I'd never been a war gamer, on all I knew was Lord of the Rings. Once I started to get a little bit more confident with actually playing games and learning, learning how different games worked and different systems and blah, 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 blah. I wanted to do more. I wanted to play different games. Uh, I also started to uh, make terrain uh, and things like that. I do a lot of different stuff that, that wasn't necessarily solely for Lord of the Rings. So myself and Jay, who is now the uh, co-host on um, Top Table Gaming, we, we, we spoke about creating Top Table Gaming and we come up with the name Top Table Gaming. Um, but we were just dragging our feet a little bit and it got to the point, uh, Jay then got like, he, he, he was fully in on a game called Guild Ball, which was released and he set up a, a Guild Ball only channel, um, which done very well at the time. Uh, and I just thought, well, I'm going to carry on. I'm going to get this done. So I created Top Table Gaming, and it was more of a way for me to vlog what I was doing and just share my hobby projects and things like that. And yeah, it was it was great. It 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 got popular pretty quick. Um, a lot of the people who were watching the videos that I was taking part in and the content I was creating for the GB Show podcast were subscribed and would tune in. And you know, there was a lot of backwards and forwards on the the comments, and it it was great. It was we loved it. It was fantastic. Um and I've never looked back. Jay come, got come back on board a few years ago, um, and again, the channel morphed into something else. It stopped being a like a hobby vlog style channel, and actually became what feels like a, a real YouTube channel. Um, we we try to keep it as cutting edge as we can. We we try to have as much on it as we can. We don't want to pigeonhole ourselves into one genre or you know one one type of video that we release. We want a mix of everything. So. Yeah, I'm really happy where it is, but that's that's pretty much how Top Table Gaming came to be, um, and it's going from strength to strength, and that's all down to the people who support us and the community. And yeah, it's great, and I'm I'm looking forward to uh, to where we'll where we'll be in five years. I'm excited. I have no clue where that will be. I I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I really don't know. If you'd have asked me twelve months ago, would we be where we are now? I wouldn't have had a clue. Um, I, I kind of just taking it as it comes and rolling with the punches, so to speak. So. We'll kind of we try and we try our best to sort of feel what the community want from us and and adhere to that and 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 feed into that. Um, at the minute, we're doing a lot of live stuff, which I really enjoy. Jay really enjoys um, because we get a lot more back and it's instant feedback uh, from from the viewer. Um, so it's great. Yeah, who knows where we'll be. Uh, I'm hoping once this COVID malarkey calms down to uh, take Top Table on the road and, and do live, cover live events and things like that with interviews, battle reports, live uh, commentation and think commentation, is that a word? Commentary, 
<laughs> God knows. It's late. Um, but yeah, that, that that's where I'm hoping Top Table will go. What advice would I give to somebody who's thinking about being a YouTuber or a content creator? My, the first piece of adm advice I would give, if, if, it, if it has crossed your mind in thinking about it, would be go for it. Don't let anyone put you off doing it. Don't not do it because you think, oh, I'm not going to do that because there's already three or four people doing what my vision is. Try it because you never know how it's going to pan out. And what you have in your mind of how it's going to be, I can probably pretty much guarantee that when it plays out, it'll be something totally different and it'll have a different feel for you and you'll know straight away if it's for you or not. It's hard work, don't get me wrong. Um, I think everyone seems to think that being a YouTuber is setting a camera up on a tripod, pressing go and away away, away you go, you're off, you, you're cooking, you're a YouTuber. There's, there's, there's far more to it. Um, the other thing I'd say is set yourself a budget. Uh, this is massive because it, it can be a massive rabbit hole um, with spending money to, be, to, to create content. Set yourself a budget and invest in equipment um, that is at the top end of what you can afford. And the reason I say that is because I have and Jay has um, a milk butter here in my man cave, shelves full of it at the studio, equipment that we've paid good money for and is obsolete now. It's obsolete because we got it and we realised it wasn't what we were looking for. We, th we, we, had this, we thought it was going to be and it turns out it's not. We need something else. We need something with a better picture. We need something with a better sound. We need better mics. We need better lights. Research the equipment that you're going to need. Um, and th this is all this is all like the basic stuff. But when it comes down to um, making it work, you need to have that fire in your belly. You need to have commitment. You need to set yourself targets and hit them. Um, don't make promises you can't keep. And um, just have people around you who are supportive and will back you up and um, are knowledgeable about the things that you're not knowledgeable about. Don't be afraid of asking for help. Don't be afraid of reaching out to other YouTubers, other content creators and asking for help, asking them how to do certain things. Um, I'm notorious for it. Anyone who knows me who is a content creator will probably at some point have had me mither in the life at them. How do I do this? How do I do that? Blah, 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 blah. That's the only way you're going to learn. Um, for me, I've loved every second of learning what I've learned up to this stage, and I haven't even scratched the surface yet. Um, so yeah, enjoy it. Don't. As soon as it starts to feel like a job, you need to take a step back. And I've been there, and Jay's been there, and and Ben's been there. Um, when Ben was on, when Ben was part of the channel, we've all been there, and you will get there. You will have. You will have weeks where you think, is it really worth it? Just take a step back, take a breather. You know, you're not getting paid to do this um, unless you're, you're top end. Do you know what I mean? Um, which in that case, you better get working. Um, but yeah, this is something that majority of people do as a hobby. Um, enjoy it. Try and not let it get on top of you. Try and not be too disheartened when you, your videos are not getting the views that you want them to get. Um, because all of a sudden what will happen is you release a video which you think is uh, a filler video or you know a half-hearted video and you'll 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 find the pulse of something that people are interested in and you'll go with it um, and the, the, the that's part of the thrill of doing this is trying to keep your finger on the pulse because it's hard because it just changes people's interests change day by day um, but it's a lot of fun and you'll make friends that you never thought you'd make um, you'll meet people and talk to people that you never thought you'd talk to um, and it's an experience and um, that's what life's about right just trying different and new things so give it a go don't be shy and if you need anything from us not that we can give anyone good advice but by all means we'll try reach out um, but yeah that, that that's it really so I think I've answered all my questions and I need to nominate three people right so I've got my three people I know who they are my first person is Mr. Harry Parkhill. I'm nominating Mr. Harry Parkhill because 
Well, there's a number of reasons. Uh, first couple of reasons are the fact that he is a multi-content creator. Not only has he got a YouTube channel, which I'll put the links uh, below, he also has a podcast, which is very popular. Um, he's he's like myself. He's he's mainly Middle Earth. Um, he's a great guy. He's one of the nicest guys in the community that I've met. Um, he's so open and generous with his time. Um, he's just a really nice guy to be around. Uh, he, he has a good aura about him. I've got a lot of time for Harry. Um, so, Harry, I nominate you, pal, and I look forward to hearing your stories uh, about how you become and what you have planned uh, for your content creation. Nomination number two doesn't really need an introduction from me. Nomination number two is Chapter Master Valrak. Now, if you play 40k and you live in the UK, you know who Chapter Master Valrak is. He's one of the biggest YouTubers for 40k. Uh, in the country, um, if not global. He smashes it out of the park when it comes to being a uh, finger on the pulse, like I said before, and um, releasing news as it lands. Um, he's a great guy, he's a mank, so thumbs up from me there. He lives local. Um, I'm nominating him because I personally am very interested to hear him answer these questions. Um, before lockdown, we were planning on getting together. I was going to show him the ropes for Lord of the Rings. He was going to show me the ropes for 40k. But COVID happened um, and we had to put a pin in that. Hopefully it will happen soon. But in the interim, uh, yes, I nominate you, my friend. And we look forward to seeing your answers. Nomination number three and my final one is Mr. Damien O'Byrne. Uh, I'm nominating Damien O'Byrne because I think... Um, well, apart from being my partner in crime on Battle Streams in Middle Earth, uh, I think he has a slightly different outlook than most content creators. He is definitely more on the it's, it's a hobby uh, side of it. Um, and I think it would be nice for you guys to get both perspectives. So I nominate Damien O'Byrne um, and I look forward to seeing all three of uh, your guys' videos in response. Don't let me down. Um, but yeah, that's it. Thanks, Andrew, for nominating me. Thanks, Spud, for kicking this off again. Um, and um, if you're not already subscribed, click the button, click the bell. You, you know the drill. It's YouTube, right? Um, do what you need to do. And hopefully I'll see you in a video soon. Uh, we're live streaming on Wednesday, so I might see you then. Take care, people. Keep washing these little mitts, these trotters. And I'll, I'll see you soon.